it's through that name, God, that you've given us the authority this afternoon, that we can come into your presence and we can cry, Abba, Father. Know that even before we ask, it has already been delivered. Even before we've already pleaded, it has already been given. Even before we've already put our petitions before you, God, you have already granted them. You are God that is awesome. You are God that is merciful. You are God that's graceful. You are God that's holy. You are God that's excellent. You are God that is above all God. Hallelujah. You are the God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. There is no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. There is no God like Jehovah. Heaven declares and heaven decrees the glory that you have, Father. And right now we come in confidence. We lay aside every single weight that so easily beset us. We lay aside every single weight that so easily beset us. We lay aside every single weight. That so easily beset us. And we decree the glory and the victory right now. For we serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a righteous God. The sickness has to bow down before you. Cancer has to bow down before you. High blood pressure has to bow down before you. Alzheimer's has to bow down before you. Mama, Nayama, Nulu Mosheka, Dementia has to bow down before you. Back pain has to bow down before you. Head pain has to bow down before you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth of Messiah, we trample here come asunder every element of sickness under our feet. We render you harmless and ineffective in the name of Jesus. We will prove by the blood of Jesus Christ and and by his stripes. Oh God, we will heal. God, we put before you, God. You can stand up, Abba. Evangelist coming at last hell. Now you can tell up a koshanda. Evangelist with Nike, tell Abba. Now tell Abba koshanda, Abba. Missionary Joyce, you can Abba. Now koshanda, Abba. Sister Porter, now koshanda, ya. Mandala, Abba koshanda, ya. Missionary Smith, now koshanda. No koshanda, Abba. And we decree here. Jesus Christ. Fathers, we come before you, God. Those that are going through bereavement, God. I pray that you'll put your loving arms around them right now. That you'll comfort them. For you said that you are Jehovah Shalom. God, you're the prince and the king of peace. Give them a peace that passes all understanding. Even in the stillness of the night when nobody else is around and the tears begin to flow from their eyes. God, you promise that you will collect our tears. That you'll put them in a bottle and you'll breathe over them right now. We pray for those who are going through bereavement. Sister Joyce, even to the family. Namama, Nutulu Mushenda Lama, Ayaka Sente, Sister Winsor Mama, Nakoshata, Mayoko Shenda Lama, God, thou art worthy. God, thou art awesome. Hold them in the palm of your hands. Nalama Shan, even in these circumstances, Nakoshana, draw, draw them to you, God. Draw those that need to come into your kingdom. Let them know that there's a God in heaven that loves them. There's a God in heaven that cares for them. There's a God in heaven. Oh, 
shed that on us now that was only good for them. In our mission, we put before you, God, every soul that is here today. In our mission, that our mother, on the restaurant, the cachet of the musician, praise and worship. In our mission, that our the evangelists, the deacons, the missionaries, yeah, the brothers and the sisters, our children, God, the generation of tomorrow. God, in the name of Jesus, cover them. That will shatter. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Now you're no sadder. You the Lord Pastor, Bishop Andrew God. Yeah, go shanda. We the Lord Pastor, Bishop Andrew. We the Lord Pastor, Bishop Andrew. Yeah, Master. Hold him in the palm of your hand. Cover him with the blood. Saturate him from the crown of his head unto the sole of his feet. God, I thank you for healing. God, I thank you for deliverance. I thank you that what the enemy sent for bad, you turned it around for good. And a witness and a testimony, strengthen him, speak to him in the stillness of the night. Yako shed Anoint his ears that he can only hear what the say of the Lord. Anoint his hands, dear Messiah, that everything when he touches will be anointed. Anoint his feet, dear Lord, very shadow. Yeah, I'm a shadda. Love of God, shadda with the anointing that comes from heaven and above. Remember this service, God. Remember the moderator, sister, God in heaven. I pull her before you, God. Continue to lead her. Continue to guide her. Continue to saturate her. Allah, I'm shadda. Send forth your ministry angels right now. Yeah, call her, I'm to accompany her as she moderates this service. Under the power of your anointing, Send Michael and Gabriel across the restaurant, you know, Shedda, across the rollers, from heart to heart, from spirit to spirit. God in the name of Jesus, somebody needs the Holy Ghost today. Somebody needs the Holy Ghost today. Somebody needs to speak in tongues. as the evidence.
Some have thought they had gone through their flow. But Job 2 star says, again, another day. We had gone through in Job 1. You had withstood. You had confounded the devil. That when he thought that you would be complaining, you ended up worshiping. So he comes again. Hallelujah. And at the end then, Job 2, he gets past verse 10, and he says he has three friends. Three friends come from far. They came from far, my God. Does everyone come from his own place? Thank you. Hallelujah. We'll get to the text in a moment as to why I believe the Lord led me here today. And when we have friends, there's a fair chance that they have similarities to us. Otherwise, they would be acquaintances and not friends. But if they were friends, remember, Amen. Job came from Gentile stock. And he was a rich man. The Bible said he loved God and he hated evil. So I have to admit that his friends were similar. They were coming from far. Eliphaz, the Temanite, the Temanite, Temanite. Amen. And we looked where that was, and it just means he's from somewhere in the south. Bildad the Shuhite, also somewhere in southern parts of Arabia, and so far the name of God. And that's an interesting verse here that we read because those of you that know your Bibles, if somebody was to ask you where does God come from, you would turn to Habakkuk 3, verse 3, where it said, God come from Tima, and the Holy One from there, Amen. So we know it just means from the south or the southern region. So it means they come from far. All right. And it says they came together, made an appointment to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. That was the plan. They were going to spend time mourning with him and comforting him. But what happened in verse 12? When they looked afar off, the last time we saw somebody looking afar off, he was a father for his son. Amen. Coming from me. So they didn't know him. They lifted up their voice, and instead of comforting him, they started to weep. They shed it. They cut their clothes, sprinkled dust on their heads toward heaven. Now that's different to what happened to Job in chapter 1. Because he did the same. He rent his clothes, he shaved his head, he put sack, he put ashes on his head. But at the end of chapter one he said, and he worshipped. They did all the same things, but they wept. Imagine they came to comfort him, and now they need comforted. This is what happens because you can't feel my pain for me. You cannot go through my grief for me. No matter how you say you think you feel it and you've been through yours, what you went through was yours. Amen. Your pain, your grief, your sorrow, your joy. Oh, hallelujah. Because every one of us has to go through for ourselves. And I ended up in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. Amen. And somebody here might need to know this today. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Look at that. You can't go through this no matter how much I love my wife. She's going to have to face the judgment seat all by herself. Amen. Over the years, we have sacrificed for the children. And you have done the same for yours. But you cannot substitute to stand in their place. Every one of us is going to have to stand before him. 
My God, the Bible says every eye shall behold him. My God, even as he's coming with clouds. Oh, hallelujah. Every tongue will have to confess before him. We must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Are we ready for the day of reckoning? Sometimes we ask the question of ourselves, are we rapture ready? Oh, glory be to God. But that's the question today. And you know, 2 Corinthians 5, amen, it continues from chapter 4. And it is very common. It starts with the, with the words, for we know. My God. That is not up for conjecture or for debate. If we are starting with something that says, for we know, there must be an assurance in there already that we understand what is coming to us. That if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Oh, hallelujah. Paul gives us the contrast with this verse to how he ended chapter 4. Because in chapter 4 he ends talking about our light affliction. All that we are going through, everything that we are facing, everything that we believe are mountains. He says when you compare it, it is merely a light affliction. Now if all we had was a light affliction, we wouldn't carry the burden so heavy. We wouldn't feel it so hard. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That's why he said we must cast our tears on him. Learn of him. For his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. Oh, glory be to God. We want to carry some heavy burdens. But he says you think it is heavy because that's all you know. But when I'm telling you, if you take on my yoke, it's easy. My burdens are light. Because it's just a light affliction. Wouldn't our perspective change on our situation if when we thought it was the end of the world, we just viewed it as a light affliction? Because if it's a light affliction, it must be something that I can manage, something that I can deal with, something that I can survive from. Oh, hallelujah. Paul looks and he says, light affliction. And yet, against that is a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. He looks and he thinks, see, he sees things that are temporary and he compares them with that which are not seen and eternal. Imagine, he views our body as a tent. Now, for all that we strive to do to have our own dwelling place, Tell me how many people in here are working hard to achieve a tent. All the days you go to work, <laughs> all the struggles you go through for that salary at the end of the month. Is it a tent you want to buy? Is it a tent you're looking for? Why? Because the tent is just a temporary residence. It's something that I put up for shelter, but it's not my permanent dwelling place. So therefore, why then do I put so much worry upon this earthly tabernacle if it is just a tent? Oh, hallelujah. My address, my place of re refuge must be somewhere else. My permanent residence must be somewhere else. Amen. Thank God for St. John 14. He told me not to worry myself. Because my God said he's gone to prepare a place for me. He then told me, listen, there's plenty of room there, you know. Because in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But don't worry, I'm preparing a place for you that where I am, there you shall be also. So my permanent residence is being built right now 
be prepared for me. The furnishings are going in right now. This is just my temporary residence. And yet I put so much stuff on my tents. Oh, glory be to God. Ah, I want to do this for my tents. I need to look after my tents. But it's just a temporary residence. I don't even have an address in my tent. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. My God, you know, I, we sing some songs sometimes, and there's a lovely one that the Dixon Road Choir always used to sing. They don't look for me down in Egypt, sir. Because I have pitched my tent way up in Beulah lands. Glory be to God. We have to have Amen. Aspirations for a residence somewhere else. Oh, glory be to God. This is just a tent. So when it is destroyed, my God, we are not too concerned. Oh, hallelujah. My God. Because we still have an eternal hope. Even though this tent will come to an end, it will rot and it will decay. Oh, hallelujah. We have an eternal hope. And an eternal home, a body made without hands by God, hallelujah, to last eternity. Now, brethren, I just had another birthday, and I'm getting conscious each year that is appointed unto man. <laughs> Three score years and ten, and if by reason of strength, might get four score years. And I've suddenly realized that even if I go up and down the stairs two or three times, I'm so out of breath that I really can't see four score years at the moment. Amen. Glory be to God. And I give God thanks for all those that are close. I've got over that. Amen. Because I have to know that you can make it so that I have a chance to. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. But we are thankful to God. Amen. You know what? Uh, since January started, every week I've either been to a, a homegoing service or been conducting one. The Exodus is every year. Every day, souls are passing away. And we must make certain brethren that we are fully aware that we too are in the sequence. We can't be getting ready. We must be ready. Now we encourage our one another. We travel and God bless us when we do so. We go on holiday. But when you know that it is the day of your departure, that's not the day that you start looking for your passport. Is that the day that you start reaching for the suitcase to pack? Amen. We have to be ready. We have to be prepared, knowing that soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Oh, hallelujah. My Jesus, have thine own way, Lord. So we are told and we have a promise from verse 5, amen, of a new body. Hallelujah. It's made by God himself, who has given us his spirit as a guarantee. Oh, hallelujah. We have to recognize that we were not destined to be earth dwellers. But there is another body prepared for us so that we can go up higher. Hallelujah. And when we leave this life, we will be born again into life. That's the process that we have gone through and that we believe. Yes, amen, according to Psalms 51.5. We will, behold, I was shaped with iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. I had no choice on that. But my God, like Nicodemus, amen, the one who came and said to Jesus, we know you are a teacher come from God because no man can do the miracles that you do. Oh, hallelujah. But yet, he wasn't prepared to come in the daytime. There's always something. That would stop us along the way. But we have walked that lonely road. We have taken on his name. We too have risen to walk in newness of life. My God. So one day it says on our stone. We were born into life on this day. 
but then we exited this life and we were born in eternity on the day we left here. Oh, hallelujah. I know we preach, amen, my God, and we know, and I look at time, and I think, my God, my God is not bound by time. Because if I believe what I read, that a thousand years in his sight is like an evening when it's gone. That means it's a memory. And as fast as the lightning flashes from east to west, that's how long it takes to make right. And that's how long it takes for life to end. Oh, glory be to God. So when we leave this world, the reason why I believe there is no repentance in the grave is because I've been called to account. I'm standing at the judgment seat of Christ because outside of this, there is no more time. It's all eternity. It's all happening at the same time. Oh, glory be to God. Everything is going on because there is no time measure. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the promise that we have is for the whosoever will. By the time we get to verse 9, we know by spirit that we do right now, amen, what we do right now has eternal repercussions and consequences. We must constantly strive to please God because once we leave this tent, this earthly tabernacle, my God, so whether we, you know the funny thing is, if we go through these verses and we truly believe that to be present in the body is to be absent from the Lord, why are we so comfortable in the body? I thought we were supposed to be pilgrims and sojourners. We're just passing through. Amen. We're on our way back. Oh, hallelujah. To eternity to be with the Lord. Is that not the desire of the saints? My Lord, isn't that what we see? Oh, I want to see him. My God, to look upon his face. There to sing forever. My God, I'll be saving grace. And on the streets of glory. My God, hallelujah. Cares our past. Home at last. Ever to rejoice. Should we be singing those when we are happy to be in the body? Oh, hallelujah. My God. But if we're saying we know that, my God, it's far better to be with the Lord. Oh, glory be to God. This is something for us to consider saying we're already in the second month of 2024. Time is speeding on. We don't even know from one day to the next. I'm sure if I ask most of you on a morning, 6, 7 o'clock when you're waking up out of sleep, what day or what month it is, you would be telling me it's the 4th of February already. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. But time is moving on. It's moving ahead of us. Oh, glory be to God. But once we leave this tent, it's too late to please God. Amen. We must do everything right now. Amen. To please him. Because there is a price to pay. Amen. In Hebrews 11, 6, we repeat that verse so often. We tell everybody, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen, hallelujah. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. What does that mean? In other words, we must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There is a reward for every one of us that seeks to be like Jesus, that seeks to be like him, to follow in his footsteps and to do his will. He has a reward waiting for everyone. Amen, amen. It's the kind of used to sing that one. A reward awaits in your name. Oh, glory be to God. So now we come to verse 10. The judgment seat of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. In the Greek, it's known as the bema. It's like a raised platform or a step where the Roman magistrate.
magistrate used to seek to hear cases and to pass judgment. It's reason why now that even in our court system, the judge sits higher. Amen. So he passes down a sentence, passes down the judgment. Oh, glory be to God. So we all have to come before the bema, the judgment seat of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And we may receive the things done in this body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Brothers and sisters, believers everywhere, my God, this is where the believers are judged based on what we have done for Christ. There's an argument, is it the same as in Revelation when we talk about the great white throne judgment, is your name written in the book? Well, I can't necessarily say that. All I can do is looking from what Paul has written. This looks to me like he's writing to believers. Because he says, we know that if our earthly tabernacle of this house be dissolved, there can't be somebody outside. And then I started looking and thinking, but does that mean that every child of God is not going to make it? My Lord. And then I found the scriptures that came back to me. Oh, glory be to God. Every one of us that knows Christ or professes Christ, there is no escape. We are told that the seal is in our forehead. Now look at this. We're going to be judged based by two criteria. What we have done and the motive for doing it. Look at that. Amen. So he said, for God, amen. Hebrews 6.10. God is not unrighteous, he's not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. My God. So he isn't going to forget what we have done. The labor of love is there as record. Amen. A part of what we've done. Remember, amen, when the, our, our parents used to be when we were earlier, younger, in West Bromwich. They used to tell you about, do you have any stars in your crown? Amen. Remember those conversations? And we used to think, what on earth are they talking about? <laughs> and they were so serious about it. It's not, in, it's not just good enough to have a crown. We must have stars in our crown. All those that we have brought and pointed to the way of God. It's not just salvation. It's not just about me. It's about everybody else I can bring. Go to the highways, the byways, and the hedges. Tell them, even if they don't believe you. Tell them, even if they won't receive you. Tell them. Tell them that I love them. And I came to let them know, my God, amen. So what we have done, the good deeds are there as a record. Oh, hallelujah. But also our motives for doing them are also going to be judged. And when I was looking this morning, Amen. Kevin, if you can help me, 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 1. This is a challenge for every believer. Because this says, I'm in the church. This says, I'm there, amen, in the, in the Bible classes. I'm there in the leadership team. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. I have powerful words when I stand up in the pulpit. Nobody can speak in tongues and the heavenly language like me. I have all of that, but yet I've got no love. I'm just like an empty vessel, sounding brass, tinkling cymbal. Go to verse 2, sir. Amen. Look at that. I have the gift of prophecy. I can listen to what the tongues are saying and prophesy, thus saith the Lord, hallelujah. And I have that gift. I understand all mysteries 
and I can reveal your dreams and your understanding and I'm not somebody reading bones or sprinkling rice. I have all knowledge. I have much faith. Oh, hallelujah. So that my, you know, it says you only need a little. But I have plenty faith that I can remove every mountain in my life. But I don't have any love. Oh, glory be to God. It says I am nothing. Verse 3 as well, so please. And even when I say, look, I'm giving everything away. And my body can be burned. Oh, hallelujah. I don't have any love. It says it profits me nothing. That's not the unbeliever. This is what we are going to face at the judgment seat of Christ. This is why the beamer is such a worrying situation for every believer. We have to stand before God. It's not just a matter of what I've done. I, I heal sick. I raise dead. My God, I prophesy. I spoke in tongues. I had visions and dreams. But my motives are also being questioned. And if I can do all of that and have no love, oh God, I am nothing. It counts for me as nothing at the judgment seat of Christ. Oh, glory be to God. It's seen, amen. And you, when you go home, you can read from Matthew 7. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Brother Kim, you can go Matthew 7. I want you to whisk through some verses here. Starting at verse 15. Because, huh, my God, if I can't, pro if I don't possess what I profess, watch out. It says, beware of false prophets. Come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, my God, they are hungry wolves, ravenous wolves. The church needs to be on our guard and on our double watch. Amen. Glory be to God. This is when Holy Ghost men and women are needed. Spiritual believers with spiritual radar switched on. That when, my God, remember what Job happened in Job 1 and 2? When the sons of, of God were there meeting up with him. It says Satan found himself in the midst. When we come to worship, that's when Satan wants to come in here. We must be able to detect him. God saw him from afar off as he turned up in the midst. God said to him, where are you coming from? He says, I'm coming from to and fro, back and forth, up and down. Oh, glory be to God. He come back in Job 2. He crept back in again. He said, where are you coming from? He says, God, I'm doing the same old, same old. Up and down, to and fro, back and forth. We have to be weary that when we come in to give God his praise, that we must be able to detect Satan in the midst. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Because although I'm doing all the good stuff, he wants to rob me of my love. Take my love from me. Whisper in my ears and tell me that the brother don't love me and the sister don't love me. My God. And yet we're in the house of God, in the presence of God, speaking with tongues of men and of angels. Oh, hallelujah. The judgment seat of Christ He's coming for every one of us. Oh, glory be to God. Roll through some of those verses for me, please. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Carry on through. Because these just tell us that we are known by our fruit. My God, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. It's an impossibility. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. We are not just here as trees of righteousness. We must bring forth good fruit for God. Remember what happened to the fig tree? Fig tree was there. Lots of leaves. 
Because he wasn't supposed to give shade. He was supposed to provide food. So Jesus cursed it. Oh, hallelujah. If you are just a shady tree, then I'm not calling you fig tree anymore. Oh, glory be to God. Carry on, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. I think it's verse 22 I think I need to get to. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we do many wonderful works in your name? Oh, glory be to God. This is not the ungodly. This is not the sinner. This is us as believers. And when we are standing at the judgment seat of Christ, somebody's going to come out with their defense. Amen. And it didn't say some. It says many. Help me, Jesus. Many will say. I was in the church for 30 years, 60 years, all my life. Oh, glory be to God. Look what I have done in the annals of history. Look how many messages I preach, how many prayer meetings I attended. Look how many Bible study classes I took. And didn't I do this in your name? Didn't I do that in your name? Didn't all this wonderful, look how many brethren came into and people come to Christ. Now let's get to verse 23. And then will I profess unto them. Hallelujah, God. I never knew you. Can you imagine getting to the judgment seat of Christ? Thinking everything is all right. How do you do, Peter? How do you do, Paul? I come to take up residence now. Amen. I hope you got me a big mansion on Main Street right next to Jesus. Who are you? Who, who, who are you? Glory be to God. Don't you remember me? I am Prophet John. I am Prayer Warrior Mary. Oh God, hallelujah. I am the one that reveals our mystery when people have dreams. Oh glory. But wait a minute. What do you mean, Jesus? My name isn't on the list. No, the only name on the list is Jesus. Because everything you did, you did it in the name of Jesus. So who are you? Oh, hallelujah. The judgment seat of Christ. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. I'm not even sure why I'm here in this message today. But whether it's for me or for someone else, we need to check off that our motives for what we are doing are right. Because if we think that we're going to fool Peter and, and all of those and Michael and Gabriel to get through, our name is not there. Oh, glory be to God. And all the works that have been done, yes, but they were done in his name. It was all done in his name. We were told today, at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue confess, at his name, even devils leave. Oh, glory be to God. So the power is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I want to believe it's me. Oh, glory be to God. I can't imagine. And all it told me this morning is, Andrew, work harder. Check yourself. Huh. You're going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And the one thing about that, he knows every time his name is used. He already knows. My God, Everything that I would want to take credit for is his name that did it. Oh, hallelujah. It was his name that covered it. It was his blood that was shed that ransomed everybody. Oh, glory be to God. I never knew you. Oh, hallelujah. Yet yeah, we, brethren, we all must stand before the judgment seat of God. What will our answer be? Lord, help me. 
the whole way. Until my change comes. My God. You know, Job looked, he said, my God, even though even though worms eat my body and my flesh, yet in this flesh I shall see God. We must know him and the power that comes from his resurrection. Brothers and sisters, friends, amen, here in the sanctuary visiting us virtually today, here at Mount Warren, there is a day of reckoning that is coming. And we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we have to give an account. We better make certain that our account is straight. That our account is balanced. Oh, glory be to God. Because it's only what we do for Christ will last. God bless you. In Jesus' name.
word coming from his mouth. If ever there is a time that we see to reflect upon where we are with God, if ever there is a time that we need to reflect on whether we are in the faith or not, if ever there is a time that we need to reflect on whether we are rapture ready, surely it is now. As Bishop said, while we are in this body, that is the time that we can make right. Because there is a time that is coming that we can't make right anymore. But if there's ever a time that we need to make right, surely it is now. The altar is open. You have heard the word. And I have nothing to add. The word of God stands. You have heard the word. And you need to get right with God. The altar is open. If you have heard the word and you need, you have a need today, the altar is open. If you just want to come and just thank God for keeping you, the altar is open. Brethren, the only thing that we are sure about is today. We don't know what tomorrow might bring. So, if we need to get right, let us do it now.
bless you everyone. Thank you for joining us here at Mount Horeb this Sunday morning, whether physically or virtually. We pray that God bless you through the rest of the course of this week. In Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Jesus.